المسلمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome again to the stories of the prophets and we are coming to the end of the story of Nuh Nawa عليه السلام I told you how he built this huge ship and uh, he was waiting for the sign from God. This ark still exists and God Almighty had left it as a sign to mankind that this is a true story. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God himself says in the Quran, and we have left this ark as a sign for all time. Then is there any that will receive admonition? Will you refuse any more after you see that sign? Uh, I read in Newsweek that there is an exposition to find the ark by the same people who found the, the ship that was drowned, the Atlantic. Uh, now they are looking for this ark in southern, uh, southern Turkey. And uh, I've seen also once uh, uh, the documentary about some people finding it and it has turned from wood into stone with time and that's why it was kept this way. And uh, they showed some pictures of it and it is cracked in half because of the heavy stones. And I've seen it, I've seen, the, I've seen this uh, picture with a ship that is covered on top and it has layers at three levels within it. Anyway, soon humanity will find it and it will be a very clear sign of the truth of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Nuh to wait for a sign. If he sees that sign, then immediately he and his followers and family, believe, the believers in his family, should go to the ark. And there he will find pairs of animals, a male and a female of every land species. And he should take them and save them from the flood by taking them on the ark. This is mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Nuh that this sign... Behold, there came our command, and the fountains of the earth gushed forth. We said, when you see that, embark of each kind two, male and female, and your family, except those against whom the world has already gone forth, those unbelievers, and take the believers with you but only believed, only few believed with him. It is mentioned that only 12 believers were left. That sign, the gushing of the, the earth with water, would start with the oven inside Noah's house. Noah has a small oven with, where he would bake bread. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, when you see that oven gushing water, then you should leave. So one day, while Noah was in his home, after building the ark, water began, began to come out from the oven. Noah immediately understood the sign. He took the believers and the believing part of his family and headed to the mountains. And a very strange sight in front of him. The ark was surrounded by animals. Beasts and gra grass-eating animals. All kinds of animals. Animals that he has never seen before. Every kind of animal. Waiting in line. Waiting for Noah to let them on the ark. Who did that? Who saved them? Who brought them from all over the earth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God. So Nuh came and embarked the ship and 
his followers and family also were on the ship and then he led the beasts and the animals and the insects and the birds separating them in the ark and every animal was obeying the orders of Noah. Every living creature, every land, animal and bird and insect entered into the ark. Only two of each. And the great flood started. And everything on earth and everyone on earth will be destroyed except those who are on the ark. Meanwhile, the earth started to gush water and cracks in the earth started to flood water from every part of earth. And not only that, also rain poured from the sky in quantities that was never seen before on earth. And water continued pouring non-stop from the sky and gushing from the earth an hour after an hour, a day after day. And the water rose and rose and the seas and waves invaded the land and the ocean's flow, floor lifted suddenly, flooding the dry land. And the earth for the first time since its creation, after it, it was created, submerged in water. After it, land has started, for the first time ever, land is covered again with water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and describes this scene in the Quran. So we open the gates of heaven with water pouring forth and we cause the earth to gush forth with springs. So the water from down and from the top met and rose to the extent decreed to the certain level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered. In another group of verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this tremendous scene, tremendous miracle. Nuh, this is in the Quran, Nuh cried to us and we are the best to hear the prayers. And we delivered him and his people from the great calamity and made his progeny to endure on this earth, his descendants to last on this, uh, on this earth. And we left this blessing for him among generations to come later on time. Peace and salutation to Nuh among the nations. Thus indeed do we reward those who do right. For he was one of our believing servants. Then the rest, the rest of the people, the rest of creatures were overwhelmed in the flood. So it is clear then that the rest here, everyone else will be drowned in the great flood. There are clear signs in science today of this miracle. You see on top of mountains, land, uh, marine uh, fossils, meaning that it was covered one day with water. So water just continued to rise and covered even the mountains. So, and waves came towering like mountains. This is also described in the Quran. The waves of that time looked like so huge, as high as mountains, and the ark floated with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the ark floated between waves like mountains. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Nuh and his followers to always praise him and to ask him to save them from the unbelievers and to ease their trip during this great punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And when you have embarked on the ark, you and those with you should say, Praise be to God who has saved us from the people who do wrong. And say, O oh my Lord, enable me to disembark with your blessing, for you are the best to enable us to disembark. Find us a place and let us get out of this ship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Noah and all is his immediate family because they believed except for one of his sons, Can'an. 
Nuh's wife also, who was an idol worshiper, as mentioned in the Quran, has already died. Now his other wife was saved because she was a believer. And the ark floated with them on the waves, towering like mountains. And Nuh saw among those who were swimming his son, who was separate from him. And he called him, Oh my son, embark with us, believe and embark with us. And be not with the unbelievers. The son replied, I will go to some mountain. It will save me from the water. No, Nuh said, this day nothing can save you from the command of God unless you believe and he shall have mercy on you. But he refused and suddenly a huge wave came between them and took his son away and was, he was drowned in the flood too. This plea from Nuh alayhi salam at the beginning of the great flood. He was asking for his son. He pleaded for his son to come with him, but he was killed. Now, Noah was promised that his family will be saved. So he was a little confused. So he started to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Oh Allah, Oh God, you promised me, and your promises always are fulfilled, that my son will be, my family will be saved. And surely, O oh my Lord, my son is of my family, and your promise is true, and you are the best to judge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh Nuh, he is not of your family. He is not a believer, and if he is not a believer, he is not of your family. This is a lesson to all of us. The true relationship is the relationship of faith. That comes first, and then the relationship of blood and kin. So, don't get confused. And Allah said to Nuh, ask me not that of which you have no knowledge. I am consulting you and counseling you so that you should not ask and act like those who are ignorant. It was a harsh answer. How could you misunderstand? I promised you to save your family, meaning if they are believers, because that is the first relationship. Noah immediately understood this message and he said, Oh my Lord, I do seek refuge. I do seek refuge with you, lest I ask you for that of which I have no knowledge. And unless you forgive me and have mercy on me, I should indeed be lost. He is sorry for asking Allah. He was sorry for being confused about this very clear order. He's a messenger. He should not have missed it. So it is clear that family relations end when the family member chooses disbelief. It doesn't mean that we treat them badly. It doesn't mean that we cut them off. We should treat them always in, a, in the best of way. But remember that our relations with the faithful are more important than our relations with even our own children. So Noah learned the lesson and despite his love and care for his son, he learned that he cannot save him. He could not save his wife who died as a, an unbeliever, and now he could not save his son. So it is your work, it is your belief that will save you, not your relations on the day of judgment. So Noah immediately recognized his mistake and sought refuge with Allah and forgiveness from Allah. And just observe this contrast from this disbelieving son who arrogantly it was very clear that everyone was dying everyone was drowning he could have saved himself by believing and going on the, sh the ark with his father but he arrogantly refused and he decided to escape to a mountain although his father warned him compare that 
to a father who asked pardon and asked for forgiveness just for asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for saving his son. So the great flood continued and drowned the earth and all human life and every creature on, on land, animals, birds, insects, except those who are on Noah's ark. Everything else was destroyed. Of course, marine life persisted and continued. The Prophet tells us that this flood continued for six months and it ended on the 10th day of Muharram, the first lunar day, lunar month. The 10th day of the first lunar month, the 10th of Muharram. That was the end of the flood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the orders. This is in the Quran. Then the word went forth, O earth, Swallow up your water, O sky, withhold your rain. And the water stopped, and the matter was ended. And the water started to go down. And the ark rested on the Mount Al Judi. This is in the Quran Mount Al Judi. Mount Al Judi, according to uh, scholars of Islam, is the mountain of Ararat in southern, southeastern Turkey. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the order and the world went forth away with those who do wrong. They were all destroyed. And the ark rested on the mountain. Not a valley or a beach. It rested on top of a mountain. And the water went down and down, and the ark was left on top of a mountain. The Prophet ﷺ used to fast this tenth day of Muharram, the first lunar month, and it is called the day of Ashura. By coincidence, this day is the same day Nuh was saved. This day was the same day that Moses was saved from drowning, and the sea was split for him. And this day was the same day Al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was killed. And the Prophet وسلم, used to fast that day and ordered the, the, the believers to fast that day. And he told us that it will forgive the sins of the previous year. So. Now the flood ended and everyone was killed. And the word came to Nuh, O oh, Nuh, come down from the ark with peace from us, from your Lord, and with blessings on you and on the people who will come from your offsprings. The other people who, sh who were with Nuh alayhi salam also were saved. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give them any children. It is only Nuh who continued to have children. So only the descendants of Nuh continued on earth. And that is why in Islam we call Nuh, Noah, we call him the second Adam, the second Adam, because it is only the descendants of Nuh that continued to inhibit this earth. His followers, his followers did not have any children, and they died, and no more descendants from them. It is also mentioned that Nuh alayhi salam, during the flood, would send a pigeon out and the pigeon would come out with nothing until one day the pigeon returned with an olive leaf and the feet of that pigeon was mudded, covered with mud. So Nuh knew then that the water is going down. And that is why the pigeon became the sign of peace 
and the olive tree or olive branch became the sign of peace. That was the end of the story of Nuh. Nuh continued to live after that and later on things changed some more. What happened after Nuh was saved, what continued after that is our next story. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.